Next example, anti-tubercular drugs if taken in empty stomach show better absorption than taken after meals. Next example, vitamin C enhances the absorption of iron as it helps to keep the iron in the ferrous form, thereby increasing its bioavailability. Next example, fatty food enhances the absorption of risofulvin and increases its bioavailability. So the next factor is drug-drug interaction. Now the first example of drug-drug interaction is antifungal drugs and antacids. So antifungal drugs such as ketoconazole requires an acidic pH for its absorption. Antacids by raising the pH of the gastric medium inhibits the absorption of ketoconazole, thus decreasing its bioavailability. Therefore, concomitant administration of antifungal drugs with antacids is avoided. The second example of drug-drug interaction is that of barbiturates. So barbiturates enhance the metabolism of several drugs thereby reducing its bioavailability and this is because of enzymatic induction. So barbiturates reduce the concentration and bioavailability of several drugs through drug-drug interaction. So the next example of drug-drug interaction is between penicillin and probenicid. Both penicillin and probenicid are excreted through the kidney by tubular secretion with the help of transporters. Probenicid having greater affinity for the transporter prevents the action of penicillin with the transporter thereby interfering with the action of penicillin with the transporter and inhibiting the excretion of penicillin into the tubules. So this increases the concentration of penicillin in the plasma thereby increasing the duration of action of the drug. So in this way penicillin and probenicid interact with each other. So, so the next factor is pharmacogenetic factor. So pharmacogenetic factors affect drug response due to inter-individual genetic variation. Now the metabolism of isoniazid occurs by acetylation in presence of an enzyme known as acetyltransferase. So some people metabolize the drug fast and they are known as fast acetylators and some metabolize the drug slowly and they are known as slow acetylators. So in patients who are genetically fast acetylators, isoniazid may not reach therapeutic levels and also the plasma half-life of isoniazid is shorter compared with that of slow acetylators. Slow acetylators on the other hand metabolize the drug slowly. This leads to increased concentration of the drug in the plasma and a long plasma half-life. So this leads to increased risk for drug-related toxicities. The second example is that of succinylcholine which is a neuromuscular blocker used for anesthesia. Now succinylcholine is metabolized by a plasma polyesterase enzyme. So patients who are genetically deficient in plasma polyesterase enzyme have reduced capacity to hydrolyze succinylcholine. So this leads to increased concentration of succinylcholine in the plasma and a longer plasma half-life. So this leads to a prolonged action of succinylcholine which manifests as paralysis and succinylcholine induced apnea. These are my references. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share.